People have pressured me into doing so many things, like cutting class, drinking, doing drugs. Like, I always said no. If there's one thing I do now, is that you don't have to follow the crowd. Well, guys, I had faith. For some reason, I honestly had faith in the fact that I would not have to be making this video, but I guess I should have known better because, uh, here we are. Now, as I'm sure many of you already are aware, one of Darman's most recent videos featured the YouTuber Sniperwolf. If you have no idea why that's a big deal, or if you have no idea who Sniperwolf is, I will give you a quick rundown. SS Sniperwolf is a huge YouTuber who over the last month or so has been in some hot water. Very, very hot water. I think it was actually one month ago today exactly when SS Sniperwolf doxed the YouTuber Jax Films. If you want more detailed information on this entire situation, I'll leave a video in the top right corner, but essentially, about a year ago, Jax Films, a guy who's been on YouTube and popular on YouTube for a very long time, made a channel called JJ Jax Films that was dedicated to critiquing Sniperwolf's content. It started off as pretty much just kind of a joke, it seemed, but it very quickly turned into something bigger. Now, if you're needing this explanation because you have no idea who Sniperwolf Sniperwolf is, you probably have no idea what she does on YouTube either. So basically what she does is she pulls popular TikToks off the internet, or popular videos in general really. She watches them with a face cam and then gives a very basic bare bones reaction. Sometimes it's just a laugh. And that's it. There's no real meaningful commentary, it's not like she's using these clips to talk about something. She's basically just allowing her internal dialogue that's playing while she's watching a video to be spoken out loud. It is purely a reaction. Now while Jax Films made it very clear he didn't like this kind of content. His main gripe was that Sniperwolf, being this huge channel that's making all kinds of money from doing these reactions, is not giving any sort of credit to the creators of these videos that she's reacting to. So, he called her out on it a lot. He led a pretty big charge about this, which led to a lot of people not liking Sniperwolf, and a lot of creators copyright claiming Sniperwolf's videos after they found out their videos were featured in them. Now, uh, Sniperwolf... Not a huge fan of this movement, alright? Her and Jax Films had some Twitter beef, they had a bunch of arguments. It was pretty clear they were not big fans of each other, and one month ago it all came to a head when Sniperwolf showed up to Jax Films' home and doxxed him by posting a picture of his house onto her Instagram story. An Instagram story on an account with over 6 million followers. Now, as I'm sure you might imagine, the internet did not think this was very cool, and people were very understandably angry. Most people, myself included, we're calling for Sniperwolf to be deplatformed. Unfortunately, that did not happen. If you want to hear about the entire story, once again, there will be that video in the top right corner. But I don't want to talk about this the entire video because that's not what we're talking about today. As you can tell by the title, we are talking about Dar Dar Binks, baby, who recently has doubled down and put Sniperwolf into another video. In my video before last, we talked about Darman's first entry into his Sister's Secret series, where Sniperwolf appears in the video where that girl gets her first period in class. Yeah, you heard that right, it was kind of a doozy. And how having Sniperwolf in a video one month after she doxxed a YouTuber is a pretty crazy decision even for Darman. You have a person who is universally disliked across the internet right now for doing something pretty serious. Alright, let's not try and act like what Sniperwolf did here is not a big deal. I mean, doxing another YouTuber because you don't like what they said about you? That's pretty severe. And in that video, I talked about the fact that Darman absolutely had to know what was going on. Even though I wouldn't consider Darman a true traditional YouTuber. Like, I'm sure at this point he doesn't even really run his channel. He's basically just running a film studio that publishes through YouTube. There's gotta be somebody who's telling him what's going on across the website. Especially if it pertains to him. So there is not a doubt in my mind he was not aware of the Sniperwolf situation, and there is even less doubt in my mind that him and Sniperwolf didn't talk about it. But let's just say for the sake of the argument, he had no idea what was going on. Even if that's the case, I can assure you, after uploading that last video, he knows knows now, and he's still decided to go forward with another video with Sniperwolf. Now look, we're not really going to be talking about the video itself today, because honestly, it's one of Darman's less egregious entries. It's a pretty boring, typical tropey teen drama. Not a whole lot happens. It also doesn't have a title, so uh, not sure what's going on there, but what's really important here is the repeated inclusion of Sniperwolf, okay? Because after the reception of that first video, there is absolutely no way Darman does not know 
know what is going on. And I feel like in the realm of what we're talking about, that's a pretty big deal. Okay, I'm no stranger to giving Darman a hard time. I'm basically a professional at it at this point. But that's not what I'm doing here, okay? This is different. This is not me picking apart a Darman video for not really making sense, or talking about a script, talking about a bad plot. This is Darman making a moral decision that is really not cool. I've said in the past that my Darman videos are all in good fun. A lot of people think I hate Darman. They say stuff like, you must see this man in your nightmares. No, that's not the case. He just happens to have a YouTube channel that I find very funny to critique because the videos are bad. And they're consistently bad, so I can make a lot of videos on them. Those videos are in good fun, okay? I've never really had a real problem with Darman outside of a few isolated incidents where he's tone deaf or he's misinformed about what he's talking about. But even then, I've chalked up most of those incidents to ignorance. Darman just not really knowing what he's talking about. This is different. This is not a bad video. This is not a plot that makes no sense or throwing a buzzword into a title to get views. This is something, to me, that is malicious. This is bad. This is throwing away morals for money. Which is even worse when you try and present yourself as this guy who's changing the world and only wants to do good. This is a huge blemish on Darman, one that I don't really think is redeemable. Okay, and some people might think I'm overreacting here, but let me try and explain myself because I think you have to be in a certain position to think the way I'm thinking here. So give me a chance to explain, okay? Sniper Wolf docks Jax films to the entire internet, okay? People took screenshots of that story that will never ever be off the internet. Unless Jack and his family decide to move, if people ever want to find out where he lives, it is a single Twitter search away. That damage is irreversible. Now while there's only so much that outside forces can do, YouTube could have done a lot. They 100% should have banned Sniper Wolf, and I don't really see an argument against that, okay? But they didn't, and now they've set a precedent. A precedent that is pretty worrying to people like me. People who do YouTube for a living. Now look, don't get me wrong here, I am not looking for a pity party, I am not trying to paint doing YouTube as a job as this thing full of hardships. I've said it multiple times before and I will continue to say it, it's the best job in the world. However, the way YouTube handled this is pretty scary. Allow me to try and morph this situation to fit you and tell me that it's not a little scary. All right, so let's say you've got a guy who goes to your school or you work with named Bill, okay? Bill doesn't like you. So Bill decides to send your address to 10 million people that don't like you either. Your boss hears about this and what is he do? Does he fire Bill? No. Does he reprimand Bill? Not really. He docks his pay and everything goes back to normal. And that's it. 10 million people now have your address that don't like you and might use that address for something not so good. And the guy who gave them your address, his life is the exact same as it was before he did it. And that's how doxing is now handled on YouTube. Does that not sound a little spooky? To know that at some point somebody could drop your address to millions upon millions of people who don't like you and they have no consequences keeping them from doing it? Now real quick, let's go back to our imaginary scenario. The next day, the HR department catches wind of what happened, and what do they do? They call Bill in, and they give him a raise. Not only that, they put him in the HR training videos on how to be a good person in the workplace. And that is what Darman has done. He is not only supporting her financially and paying her to be in his YouTube videos right now, he's putting her in videos where she is the voice of reason. Her main role in this series is providing guidance for the main character, being the person who always knows what is going on and always always knowing exactly what to say and providing the life lesson for the video. A month after she proved she is definitely not that person in real life. The first video was a bad sign, obviously, but I thought that maybe, just maybe, Darman wasn't fully understanding the situation. You know, doxing is something that a 40-year-old man might not fully be able to grasp at first explanation. I know some of the people I've tried to explain doxing to didn't really get it either, so uh, I thought maybe there's that. Maybe there's a chance that he just doesn't really get it. And after all this negative reception, all of these comments, he'll be like, okay, this is serious. And he would cut his losses and he wouldn't go any further with this series. But that's not what happened and it has permanently changed the way I see Darman. We've seen glimpses of stuff like this in the past, especially when all the protests were going on. People saying he's a terrible boss, the pay isn't fair, he isn't doing what he needs to do as a business owner. But there was always so much conflicting information, there was always one person contradicting another. I felt like most of the stuff people were saying about Darman was probably 
probably true, but at the same time, I've got to admit, I also thought there was probably some truth stretching going on, and nobody was really telling the full truth. But this, this kind of confirms what I've been thinking for a while now. Darman's not that good of a guy. But just like pretty much everything with Darman, this is going to blow over because, well, his audience is children. He is officially siding with the person who is actively making YouTube an unsafe place, and I feel like nobody really cares about it right now. And look, I'm not like calling for Darman to be cancelled or whatever, don't try and twist that into this, but he is a grown man, and as a fellow grown man, I am calling him out on his actions. I feel like this is something he should address. Who you keep close and who you support is a very telling sign of your morals, and this is not a good look, Darman. Well guys, what do you think? Am I just overreacting? Is Darman doing nothing wrong by supporting the old wolf? I'm seriously interested to hear your guys' thoughts. I mean, it's not like I expected Darman to be a model citizen, but this is just a crazy move, even for a businessman. Like, even if you're not really concerned of what the internet thinks about you, this is not a good look. To associate yourself with a person who's hated on the platform you make all your money on, it almost makes me think there's something deeper going on here. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe button and touch it. It's free. It won't cost you anything. But for now, that's all I have for you today. Bye.